Mordhow! Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorial. So, I've been asked actually by lots of people to review Mordhow, the upcoming computer game. Um, there's been trailers gone out recently, or about a month ago, on YouTube. Um, and so I'm going to do a trailer breakdown review. Um, but first up, I'll just say, it looks a pretty cool game, and I'm pretty sure I want to play this game. Um, I'm a big fan of Mountain Blade, as my regular viewers would know, because it's the only game I ever get time to play, and so it's the only one I refer to usually. But Mordhau looks pretty damn good fun. There's a few things about it just on the offset looking at the, uh, looking at the trailers that I'm not really a big fan of, but I'll talk about those as we go through them. So let's take a little bit of a look. So first up, it's our kind of typical movie trope. Why are people in armour running? What, what do they gain by running? Um, I do understand you can gain a bit of momentum and crash into enemy lines, all this kind of stuff, but they're running in a loose formation. Just stop running. <laughs> Wearing armour, fighting in armour. Yes, I do own armour. Yes, I do know about weapons and all, all this kind of stuff. And it is tiring. It is exhausting. You don't run if you don't need to. Even more than that, you try and keep together in some kind of um, cohesive formation. So just charging aimlessly at the enemy, never really a good thing. But I do understand that the public, and the game playing public particularly, but also movie viewing public, has come to expect this. We can see it in films like Troy, where um, they're using you know pikes and stuff, where weapons absolutely that are dependent upon staying in formation, yet they still charge at each other. Anyway, let's carry on with the trailer. Hold on a minute there. We're seeing a two-handed sword. Um, I don't know what else to call it, really. It is a two-handed sword. It's not It's not a great sword. Well, it's probably a great sword. It's not what I would really call this five-handed. But anyway, it's a two-handed sword. And he is cleaving through entire lines of opponents. Uh, this doesn't happen. Um, certainly not if they're wearing armour. Um, because you just can't chop through armour with the edge of a sword. That doesn't happen. That's why weapons like maces and axes and warhammers were popular in the time of armour. What swords are good for is carving up people who are not wearing much armour, or indeed thrusting in gaps between armour. Um, weapons like this were popular for certain purposes. This is a falchion. Um, but this two-handed sword would not be able to cleave through people wearing armour. Yes, it would be able to do percussive damage, but not as much as something like a mace or a hammer. But what's more worrying than that is that he's hitting one opponent and then going through and hitting another and then going through and hitting another. How? Like, the sword isn't going to pass through the bodies, especially wearing armour, um, and it's certainly not going to have enough momentum to then, you know, seriously injure another person going through. Anyway, it does look cool, I've got to say. Let's carry on watching the trailer. So, dude pushing the catapult, um, why is he wearing kind of late 15th century armour when we've just seen some people wearing 13th century armour? I'm a bit confused and that's one of the things that looking at all of the trailers and the gameplay um, videos on YouTube for uh, Mordhau that kind of confuses me is when is it supposed to be set and how is it fair, assuming that they'd modelled the armour accurately in terms of its weight versus effectiveness, it's kind of unfair to have someone from the late 15th century fighting someone from the 13th century, because clearly late 15th century armour is better. It's, it offers better protection and is lighter and is less hot. Um, so it's kind of a bit weird for me as a historian to see them chopping and changing between different periods. Anyway, let's carry on watching. Was that an exploding stone? <laughs> so cannonballs, and in this case a stone ball, work by, you know, ploughing through opponents. But they don't do an area attack. When they hit a wall, they don't knock people in a surrounding area flying like a shell's just gone off. Anyway, a bit weird. Let's carry on watching.
So I've got to say the action looking pretty fun there. It's not the most realistic and I should throw in at this point, yes I know it's not supposed to be a uh, historical, his, you know, living history reenactment. It's supposed to be a fun game and I'm completely down with that and it does look fun and I still want to play it. Uh, just a minor detail for people who are interested, and people who are watching this video I guess are probably interested in weapons and medieval games and things like this. Um, we often see in computer games when they draw the string of a bow back, it never seems to come back far enough. It always seems to be drawn sort of in front of the face and really we should should get a sense of the bowstring coming back sort of to the side of the face. Don't quite get that here. Um, and I have to say based on just that one shot, it looks a little bit too uh, straight line. It doesn't seem to have the trajectory that we do see in Mountain Blade that's done very nicely, actually. Anyway, carry on watching. Again, we see some more of the kind of chopping through armour and heavy clothing and stuff in a way that doesn't really happen. Uh, and at the end, they're chopping down a guy who's actually wearing full what looks like a mixture of plate and mail with a great helm on. A uh, bit, bit strange, bit strange with the sword. You might be able to do that with a mace. I suppose you could knock someone down with a two-handed sword, but it's not going to do any cleaving damage because you're not getting to flesh. You're not going to get through. You're not going to magically pass through the armor. Um, one other thing I've noticed watching the sort of these bits of gameplay, as it were, and watching the other gameplay videos as well, aside from outside of the trailer is that the parries are really, really weird. I don't really know how they've structured the parries, but they seem to do a lot of kind of weird, kind of deflecting, hanging parries like these in situations where you wouldn't do that against the given blow. You know, if, if my sword is here and a cut comes in, I move the sword there. That's a pretty much standard block or guard in lots of different fencing systems. Um, or if my sword happens to be point downwards and a person cuts there, then indeed I'd raise up the sword to parry there. But if my sword's here and a person cuts here, transitioning to get the point down and then get underneath it, you can do it, but it's not normal and it's certainly not usually advisable. Um, so just some of the way that they do these, they, they've sort of structured or modelled these guards or deflections kind of look really weird to someone who actually uses swords. Anyway, let's carry on watching. <laughs> So I've got to say, you know, it's pretty cool charging along on horseback and, and knocking someone smash off the back of their horse. But what I didn't get was a sense of the actual exchange of energy there. And of course, when you hit something, there's an equal and opposite force, Newtonian physics, blah, blah, blah. And we should have at least, when that lance made contact, have got a sense of the person holding the lance being pushed backwards a bit, whereas they just sit there completely rigid and immobile, dunk, just knock the person off. The physics doesn't really work like that, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. Um, but just talking about this, I'm reviewing this video, I really, really wonder what my mate Metatron would wonder about this video, because I think this is just his kind of thing. I'm sure he's got some views. Metatron! Metatron! Hello there, Matt and Scholar Gladiatoria community, Metatron here, and it is indeed a pleasure to be here today with you to take a moment to talk about samurai psychological warfare in conjunction with the usage of Yorkshire puddings within medieval North mythology. And I think it's a fantastic choice of topic, because first of all we can... What? And what do you mean is the other collaboration? And why did you give me the script then? For crying out loud... Hello Matt, good to be here. So, Mordo. Goodness gracious, that trailer is exciting to say the least. If I had to choose the best three things on that trailer, well first of all, I'd say that cavalry charge with the lance. I mean, it was already something I really liked doing on good old Mountain Blade, but this time, sexy graphics, smoother animations, you know, full gallop, hit the mother f you muppet. So, this will be the first thing. Secondly, definitely that murder stroke. Tell you what, come with me. Alright, so let's talk 
combat. There is that part where they hold the, the blade and the sword from the blade in order to use the murder stroke, so hitting with equivalence. Now, as you know, the murder stroke technique was used to fight against a fully armored opponent. Why? Because you can't cut through plate armor. But in the game, in the trailer, we see that they do cut through armor, at least in certain parts. So my question is, how are they going to implement this? I mean, is it only going to give you a boost as far as the damage is concerned against plated armored opponents? Or is it actually going to work in the sense that if you cut against plate, it's not going to work, so you do need to switch stance? That's my question. It will be really interesting to know how they're going to implement this. And of course the third thing would be the unscrewing of the pommel, the end right thing. Yeah, that was really cool about Scalagrim Men. Yes, so these are my thoughts and the three best things of this video. Did you have pasta today? And Mordhau, there's the money shot, that is the Mordhau, a Mordhau being a strike where you hold the blade of the sword, obviously I can't hold this one because it's too wide, but you, narrow blade of the sword, you hold the blade of the sword and you swing the quill on like a warhammer into the person's head. The problem is that's basically an armoured fighting technique and here they've specifically showed someone in armour fighting someone not in armour. There is no sensible place in logic for having an armoured person turn their sword around and hit an unarmoured person in the head with a quill on. It's not to subdue them or knock them out, take them prisoner, because that quill on is going to go through their head. But it's just such a needless technique in that scenario. They really should have shown it armoured person against armoured person, or indeed unarmoured person unarmoured person against armoured person, so the armoured person being hit, really doing a Mordhau against someone who's not in armour doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but anyway, I suppose someone will say it's shown in Talhofer, so yeah, let's go for it, it looks looks funny. Thanks again to Metatron, Raffaello, for giving um, his contribution to this video, and maybe you'll see me over at his channel sometime soon. Cheers folks. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, follow us on Facebook, you can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.